What's up, guys? Welcome back to Storytime with Uncle John, where we pluck stories from Reddit and around the web that interest me and you and maybe a few other people. Tales from Tech Support's a little slow today, so I decided we're going to go with Am I the A-Hole? I know we said we're not going to do too many of these, but we're going to do probably an average of one every week or two. So hopefully you all enjoy and uh, let's get to it. Am I the a-hole for shrugging when my dad's wife told me they need all of dad's money right now? I, 17 male, might be the a-hole and I might be a big one, but I wanted to get people's insight. So my dad left my mom when I was 14 to be with his wife, the woman he's cheating on my mom with. My dad didn't want me to think badly of him, but I did. He knew I did and he knew he couldn't change my mind easily. We always knew my parents would end up with shared custody until I was 17 at least. From experience, the judges in family court will only stop enforcing shared custody when the kid turns 17 and speaks out. Any younger and they insist on 50-50. I also knew my mom would struggle on her own because while she did work, she never made as much as my dad. She also wouldn't get child support because of the 50-50, and it wasn't ordered even with a difference in income. So when dad pleaded with me to give him a chance to show he could still be a good dad and he said he would do anything for me, I told him to keep supporting mom and make sure she wasn't going to end up struggling while he got off easy. I told him she deserved that at least, after what he did, and that I deserved to see my mom doing well. My dad agreed and he paid it as child support instead of spousal support or whatever it's called. It really helped mom and she actually went back to school so she could get a better job. Dad's still paying that money. He knows I appreciate him doing it and he also knows it's one of the only reasons I don't just decide to say F him and never want a relationship again. My mom is also less stressed. She has mixed feelings about my dad giving her money when legally he doesn't need to, but she also knows this is the only way for me to not feel the need to help support her. Where my dad's wife comes into it is this. She never liked that my dad paid this child support. She never liked that I insisted on it for my dad and I to have a relationship, but now my dad's house is struggling a bit and some changes needed to be made. His wife's son and daughter were in dance, football, softball, karate, music lessons, and art classes as paid extracurriculars. My dad and his wife also have a baby together. The wife's kids had to cut two activities because they can't afford it anymore. It pisses his wife off because if dad wasn't paying the money, they could still afford those things. She told me I should stop obligating my dad to support my mom because they need it more and my mom isn't their problem. I told her that she and her kids aren't my problem. She told me their family while mom is not her or her kids family or my dad's anymore. I told her she and her kids are dad's family but not mine. She told me they need all of dad's money right now before things need to get cut back on. I shrugged in response. She told me I was so callously flippant and it wasn't a good look to care so little about my siblings lives. <laughs> Only one of her kids, the baby, is technically my half sibling. Am I the a-hole? Alright. Technically, eh, I don't know, I'm kind of torn on this one. Basically, your dad should be throwing some extra support your mom's way. I don't know if it should be forever, but maybe to help her get over the hump of going to school and getting a better job, something like that. But if the courts say that he's not obligated, he's not obligated. On one hand, I feel like you're... Op I, I'm going to speak to you guys. On one hand, I feel like OP is kind of blackmailing dad into paying the money. It's not kind of. It really is. You either do this or, you know, we're done. And... I'm not saying I blame the kid, but at the same time, I don't know. But either way, I mean, if it's not dad's legal responsibility, then the wife sort of has a, the new wife sort of has a point. Uh, not about the whole siblings thing. I mean, if you guys were never raised together as siblings, then, eh, I don't know. Of course, none of this would have been an issue if dad hadn't run around to begin with, so... But I do know that, you know, marriages don't always make it. And sometimes there's shared responsibility there. If your dad really did go out and cheat, then that's dad's problem. So really all of that just to say that this is one big convoluted mess. And I think everybody plays a little bit of a part in making things worse in the end. Uh, you know, well, except for your mom. I mean, she's taking the money, but she didn't ask for it. She's not fighting anybody. She's just kind of trying to do her thing. You kind of played into a little bit of the drama with, you know, blackmailing your dad into giving money when he didn't legally need to and he still wanted to have a relationship with you and if he was willing to do that to prove that he wanted to be a good dad then so be it anyway next story what do you guys think am i the a-hole for wearing an american flag speedo to a pool party and embarrassing my girlfriend oh my god i'm not built for speedos so i can't even relate to this one my girlfriend 27 female and i 28 male have been together for about 18 months we don't fight often, but our biggest fight came earlier this year when I questioned what she wanted to wear to a groom's dinner at my friend's wedding. I was in the wedding party and we had spent the entire day setting things up for the wedding. 
The groom's dinner was that night and was going to be a very casual affair since everyone was sweaty and tired from working all day. My girlfriend arrived later in the day and asked me if I could meet her at our hotel so she could change. When we got to the hotel, she put on a pretty fancy dress, kind of like a cocktail dress that she would wear to a club. I told her that the groom's dinner was going to be casual since everyone had worked all day and people weren't going to be dressing up. She scolded me and told me that I don't get to tell her what to wear. She said she'll give me a pass that one time, but I should never again criticize or question what she wants to wear. Ooh. I dropped it, but when we got to the dinner and she saw how overdressed she was, she got embarrassed even though people commented on how good she looked. This past weekend, we were invited to a pool party at my girlfriend's friend's house. Since it was close to the 4th of July, I decided to break out my American flag speedo that I got in college as a joke. <laughs> I was trying it on before we left to make sure it still fit okay and my girlfriend saw me. She asked me what the F I was wearing and told me that I can't wear that. I asked her why not and she told me it's gross, revealing, and unattractive. I told her the same thing she told me at the wedding, that she doesn't get to tell me what to wear. She told me that it's not the same situation at all and I'm going to make a fool of myself. I told her that if I'm wearing this Speedo, clearly I don't take myself too seriously and that I'll bring a spare swimsuit if she's going to make such a big deal out of it. When we got to the pool party, I took off my shorts to reveal the Speedo and got a few laughs from my girlfriend's friends. I started playing some pool volleyball with some of the other guys there and just went about my day having fun. My girlfriend spent most of the day inside by herself or with a few friends. She barely came out by the pool. One of the few times she came out, she pulled me aside and asked me to please change out of the Speedo because I'm embarrassing her. I told her that she's the only one who's making a big deal out of this and that if I'm in the pool, no one notices or cares anyway. She went back inside after that. When we got home that night, she wouldn't talk to me, so I gave her some space. She came to me a bit later and asked me if I was going to apologize to her. <laughs> I told her I don't feel like I have anything to apologize for, and she told me I embarrassed her all day even after she told me to take off the Speedo. I told her she needs to loosen up because she's making a big deal out of a little fun joke, but she thinks I'm an a-hole. If you guys had an agreement before where, you know, you kind of let each other know and you don't really look good, like my wife will let me know when I look too frumpy or, oh, this is Lucy. <laughs> what do you think, Lucy? You see yourself on camera? She doesn't like being picked up, so we're going to put her down before she has a stroke. Anyway, my wife will let me know if I look too frumpy or get out of the cat box. Get out of the cat box. Anyway, my wife will let me know if I look too frumpy or, you know, too underdressed. Most of the time, I'm somewhere in the middle. Enough to keep her happy, but enough that I'm comfortable and not don't feel like I'm overdoing it. So very rarely will I let her know anything unless she asks. If something's off with the outfit, I'll let her know that, you know, something can be fixed or whatever. If, you know, something's inside out, tags, whatever, you know, stupid little stuff. But generally speaking, we don't really chide each other too bad on it. If you guys had had a deal like that, fine. But you didn't. And clearly, she didn't want you saying anything about what she was wearing. Criticizing, asking her to take it off or change, whatever. So there's a clear double standard here. Considering that part of the deal, I'd say clearly you're not the a-hole. If you can't have anything to say about what she wears, then clearly the rules should be the same the other way around. And she shouldn't be able to tell you what to wear. You were covered, somewhat, I guess. Uh, again, this body's not built for Speedos, so we don't wear Speedos. <laughs> as much as I don't care about most other people in the world, there's no way I would suggest perfect strangers on a beach or at a pool to this. So, <laughs> there's that. So yes, definitely not the a-hole. I probably wouldn't push it too hard and go too many visits to pools or beaches with that same Speedo because it's sure to start some drama, but otherwise, hey, stick to your guns. Am I the a-hole for refusing to sleep on a pull-out couch during vacation? I, 28 female, planned a family trip with my parents and my brother, 25 male. <clears throat> wow, there's Dimey. All right. Before I officially booked the Airbnb that we would all be splitting the price on, I sent each of them the listing showing how many bedrooms, what accommodations, etc. I made sure to double check with my brother as the house is only two bedrooms. One room has two full-size beds, the other a king bed. I asked if he would mind sharing a room with me as three bedrooms in this area were harder to find. He said it was fine because we'd each have our own bed and asked me to book it. Once our parents signed off on it, I did book it. When we arrive, before we even have our first night's sleep, my brother declares he thinks he and I should alternate sleeping on the pull-out couch in the living room. I say, I'm not going to do that. If he doesn't want to sleep in the room designated for us, that's fine, but I'm not sleeping on a pull-out on vacation when there's two beds. I asked why he doesn't want to share a room and why this didn't come up sooner. 
He said we were adults and that he was too old to share a room. I asked why he didn't bring this up sooner. He said he figured I'd agree to the pullout situation. <laughs> I said he shouldn't have assumed or at least had a conversation with me. He kept insisting and I said no. If he wants to sleep out there or a whole vacation, fine, but I'm not alternating when I'm paid for a bed. Him sleeping on the pullout led to several conflicts with our parents as he'd get mad if they came into the living room in the morning while he was still sleeping. But as they pointed out, it's the living room, a public space. If people wanted to hang out in the living room at night, he'd start bugging us to go to our room so he could sleep, as early as 8 p.m. Wow, even I'm not that bad. We're on vacation. We're going to stay up a little later and hang out. I always offered to let him sleep in the extra bed in the room, but he refused unless I promised that I would sleep on the pullout that night, which I didn't do. By the end of the seven-day, six-night trip, he was irritated with all of us over this. My parents and I feel like that he's the one that put himself in this situation, and that there was an alternative to him sleeping on the couch, but he chose not to. However, my brother's insisting that I should have swapped with him. Am I the a-hole for not sleeping on the pullout? Definitely not. Holy cow. What is he, two? You know, he, well, he acts like somewhere across between a late teenager, early adult who thinks they should have their own space and a two-year-old who's going to throw a tantrum if they don't get what they want. May I help you? Let's not walk on the keyboard. I mean, seriously, there was a perfectly good bed in that room. There's no reason that they couldn't share the room. And yeah grow up. Maybe next year, you and your parents can go on vacation and leave the little brother at home with a babysitter. Hmm, that'd serve him right. Am I the a-hole for telling my sister there were consequences to not helping out our mom? This sounds familiar. So my mom and my sister live a state over. Around a year ago, my mom's home flooded and she needed a place to stay until the insurance fixed it all. My sister lives near mom, 30 minutes away, and mom went to her first for a place to stay. She refused and basically told her to kick rocks. They had a good relationship before this. She won't even let mom stay for a few days so one of us could pick her up. I drove seven hours to pick mom up and she stayed with me for two months until her home was good. The family was pissed at my sister and it resulted in a discussion about how she never helps anyone out. Everyone has experienced it at some point where she didn't care enough to help out. My biggest example that pertains to me is when my car broke down and my sister refused to pick me up so I had to walk home and hitch a ride home. This was before Uber took off. I got home and she was on the phone dead scrolling. Everyone in the family has examples. We all decided to not help my sister anymore. This is the issue now. She needs a place to stay since she's moving to a new city and her lease on her home ended. So about a month to stay with someone before she can move into her new apartment in the city. Everyone has turned her down. She called me and asked if she could stay with me. I told her no and she started crying and asked why the family won't help her out. I told her that there are consequences to not helping out our mom when she needed it. She called me heartless and hung up. What a selfish, selfish, self-centered brat. Everyone needs help once in a while. Sometimes it's your mom, sometimes it's your siblings, sometimes it's just a friend in need. Sometimes even a stranger, not that I have them living in my house necessarily, but you know, we can help out somehow. And when you refuse to help other people out and you just want to do everything centered around your little orbit and your, your wants, your needs, and you don't ever think of anybody else, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that, by the way. There's absolutely nothing wrong with being selfish until you expect everybody else to bow down and help you out when you're in time of need. So, eh, I'd tell her to kiss my ass and keep it moving. Am I the a-hole for calling my sister-in-law annoying and telling her I'm tired of hearing her joke about me having a girl's name? My wife and I have been together since we were 19. We're now 32. I met her family after we'd been together a year. Sister-in-law was actually the first. Very first time we met, she blurted out that I have a girl's name, Sky, with an E, and then proceeded to laugh about it. My wife told her to shut up and stop laughing. It didn't bother me at all back then. I just laughed and told her there were plenty of male Skies around, even my great-grandfather who I was partially named after. I was named after my great-grandpa Skyler, S-C-H-U-Y-L-E-R, who went by Sky his entire life, and Sky Masterson from Guys and Dolls. So the first time was no big deal. Some people have asked me before if I felt like my name was a girl's name and not a guy's name, and I never minded. Sister-in-law joked a lot about my name and our kids' names when we were expecting our babies. It got a little annoying, but, you know, I was able to brush it off, and my wife would cut off her sister and would tell her to leave if she went a little too far, which only happened once back then. We didn't see her a lot for a while, but she got engaged last year and was around more, and seemed to have calmed down a lot. And now she's having her own baby, a girl. And oh boy, is she really testing my patience. It started with her husband asking what she thought of the name Sky for their daughter. 
She joked that they couldn't use that name because she didn't want me to feel more like a girl than I already do. What a B. My wife told her to grow up and we left. Next time we saw her, they announced Sky was the name they decided to go with. I said, cool. Sister-in-law said she was surprised I was okay with sharing my name with a girl. I told sister-in-law her daughter wouldn't be the first and I wasn't insecure about my masculinity and saw no problem with sharing the same name girls or women. Next time we saw them, it was a joke about putting both skies in pretty pink dresses when her daughter is born. We stayed out of her way for the rest of that visit. Then she joked that I had finally gotten embarrassed by my name and was using my middle name because one of my uncles who always called me by my middle name was visiting and she heard him call me that. More stuff like that happened and then Saturday we were back at my in-law's house for mother-in-law's birthday and sister-in-law was joking with some of the mother-in-law's siblings about my name and she tried to involve me by calling me over to tell her dumb jokes. It finally got to me and I asked her does she have to be so annoying. I told her how tiring it is to always hear her dumb jokes which aren't even really jokes like she claims but insults directed at me. She called me sensitive and I told her she's the person who hasn't given up on my name in over a decade. I told her everyone gets it. She sees Sky as a girl's name, but she's not funny. Sister-in-law got mad. My wife told her she was about to become a mom and really needed to listen to us and grow up. We've told her to stop saying this stuff in the past too. She always says she's just joking. Am I the a-hole? Definitely not the a-hole. OP, you and your wife, well, your wife did call her out years ago. You should have called her out. See, the offense was to you. Bravo to your wife for standing up for you and, you know, being your support. But you should have stood up for yourself and said, listen, ha ha, very funny. Everybody gets a joke. Shut the F up. Get all that shit out of the way right on the front end. If you're going to keep making fun of me like I'm a girl, I will find your worst, weakest attribute. And I will hang on to that like a dog with a brand new bone. I will be so relentless that you will cry every time we meet. So please let it go. That probably would have stopped it right then and there. There's no point. I, you know, I tend to not want to rock the boat. I tend to be the guy that tries to stay level-headed and just, you know, get through things. But I'll be damned if somebody's going to sit there and pick at me over and over and over, saying, "Well, it's just a joke." Well, you know, so's your face. Whatever. Anyway, that one's childish, but you know what I mean. I'd rather go ahead and if if the relationship's going to be destroyed, let's destroy it right up front and be done with it. And you know, if we can come back together and see eye to eye later and reconcile, fine. If not, then I'm not wasting a decade, a decade, 10 years tiptoeing around you walking on eggshells because of your jokes. Girl, go somewhere. Mm. Am I the a-hole for telling my dad I'm not a toy he can take out when he needs me and discard me once I've served my purpose? I'm 22 male, a twin, and I have a twin sister, Ren. When Ren and I, that's hard to say. When Ren and I were four, our mom died from liver cancer. She was 30. I know that would be difficult for dad. Going from a happily married father of two to a widowed father of two with no family close enough, emotionally, for support would be a lot. But he was a better dad to my sister than to me, and that started before mom died. It just stood out more afterwards. My dad was an affectionate and caring father to Ren. She was his little girl, and he cherished her. If she fell, he would pick her up, kiss her tears, and clean her cuts. He was gentle and compassionate with her. When she was upset, she could sleep in bed with him. He'd snuggle with her on the couch. He'd pull her out of school sometimes to take her for father-daughter dates. When she was bullied, he was riding the school hard to deal with it, and he fought so hard for her. He went out of his way to make sure she was loved and supported. Growing up, I heard the words tough and strong a lot. I heard the word man a lot, and I was still so young. He never cuddled me or kissed away my tears or carried me. He never even said I love you to me. There was nothing gentle about him when it came to me. He was rougher, harsher. He expected me to be tough, to be a man, to be strong. If I had a nightmare, I was sent right back to bed. When I got bullied horrifically in high school, my dad didn't want to know. There were times Ren and I would both fall. We'd both be young, too. And even if I was bleeding more, she was the kid he comforted. It was never me. Not if it was both of us falling, and not if it was just me. He never did father-son dates. The most interest he ever showed in me was when I could help him do guy chores, like moving stuff. I tried to approach this with him on a few different occasions, but I never got to finish. He always cut me off for one reason or another. It got to a point where I expected it if I tried. I moved in with my best friend's family after I finished high school, at home. Ren lived at home for two more years. Dad only called me when he wanted something. He did it again the other day, and I decided this shit had to end. I told him I'm not a toy he can take out when he needs me and then discard me once I've served my purpose. I told him I'm his son, not his helper, and I brought up how he never says he misses me or says I love you. 
He never ever showed me love or affection and I wasn't going to tolerate it anymore. Dad sent me an email in response. He emails better than he texts, saying I was being very harsh. He said I was never his little girl and boys are raised differently. I replied I was never trying to be his little girl, but I was his little boy and he should have shown me love too. He responded again that I accused him of discarding me like a possession which was unjustified. Am I the a-hole? Definitely not. I mean, depending, I don't know. I know I was raised a little different with my dad. You know, I had a pretty decent balance between my dad and my mom, but I was still raised to be a traditional guy for the most part. And I know that sucks. It's, it's one of those things where, you know, my dad grew up on a f rural farm in Northern Maine where you had to toughen up pretty quick, especially since they had like 12 siblings. Uh, you know, there was a lot of fighting for attention and, you know, kids helping raise other kids in the house, things like that. Oh, the pterodactyls are back. Nice. Anyway, so I, I sort of get where he was coming from and he probably didn't even realize he was doing it. It was, it was just how he was shown to do things when he was being raised. And without your mom around to balance things out, it ended up being a little rough on the, you guys, uh, mostly you. And I'm afraid that I, I fell into the same trap with my kids. You know, I, I just, I never had any experience raising a girl. I mean, let's be honest, I never had experience raising any kids, but I had a certain preconceived mindset of how girls and boys should be raised. And uh, even with the girls, I wasn't totally lovey-dovey. I'm just, I'm not a touchy-feely kind of guy. Um, and, you know, I, I always worry that maybe that messed things up. Hopefully not, you know. Unfortunately, there's nothing I can do about it now except try to do things better when I realize that something went wrong. I think at some point you should give your dad a chance to see if he can pull out of it, see how it goes, you know, see if he'll, you know, invite you over just to, you know, who knows, hang out and have a beer. You know, that's a guy thing. Why not? He may not be capable of showing that kind of love to you because of the, all the pre-wired things that his parents and grandparents and great grandparents did through their lives. So yeah, it's tough. Uh, hopefully things get better for you, but I would say you are not the a-hole in this situation. Just, uh, do the best you can to see if you can bring them around. If you get a chance, click this link down here if you like handmade stuff, and uh, we'll see you on the next video.